Hey folks, and welcome back to the shack. Today we're gonna to finish this club assembly process. You're gonna want some old clothes on because we're gonna be using some epoxy and it'll ruin your clothes. Now, before we kind of get into assembling the club, you need to know a little bit more about shafts. You don't really wanna go online and just buy any old shaft, assuming that it's gonna fit in your club. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the inner diameter of the club hosel matches the outer diameter of the shaft. Now, generally these are 0.355 or 0.370. You know, they're very close, but they might not fit. So make sure you check those diameters of your clubs and the shafts that you're buying. Another thing to consider is if you're gonna use graphite or steel. Now, when it comes to shafts, you have the butt end or the grip end of the shaft, that's the wider one, and it tapers down to the tip. And sometimes you'll find some information called tip trimming. Irons, generally you don't do much tip trimming. It's usually reserved for, you know, woods and drivers and hybrids and those kind of things. And the shaft manufacturer will have instructions about specific tip trimming. Now, generally, if you want to cut a shaft to a certain length, you're going to cut it off the grip end. When it comes to the tip trimming, that will often alter the stiffness of the club. Now this shaft is kind of unique. It's a SCORE LT shaft by True Temper, and it's about you know, 15 or $16 at Golf Works Canada. And it comes in one stiffness. Uh, it's either regular or stiff. And the way you change that is by cutting off the tip. Now that doesn't mean you can do that for every kind of shaft. It only works if the shaft has a section that has a parallel diameter for a little while before it starts tapering out. And basically, the more you cut off the tip, provided it'll still fit on the club head, the stiffer the club will be. If you leave it long, the more flexible the club will be. So a little bit of research is gonna be needed on your part on if your club needs tip trimming and the specifications required by the shaft manufacturer. It can be a little complicated. Now, if you are going to cut your shaft, use an angle grinder or a miter saw that has this similar kind of cutting blade. That will rip through a steel shaft and a graphite shaft nicely. Do not use a hacksaw. A hacksaw can chip away a steel shaft or it can fray a graphite shaft causing it to start to split and come apart. Check out that chip in the steel shaft. You don't want that happening. So if you have a new club head, you're going to have to rough up the inner hosel there a little bit. I like to use a rough sandpaper and stick it in there and kind of rough it up to give the epoxy something to kind of grab onto a little bit so it's not just smooth steel in there. If it's a club that you've removed off a shaft, you're gonna to wanna to try and clean out any remaining epoxy that would be in there. Now, when it comes to your steel shaft, it's very smooth and you wanna be able to have something for the epoxy to grab onto there as well. So you're gonna to want to rough up the tip. You know, you kinda of wanna measure, make sure you're not gonna rough it up beyond the point of where the ferrule goes. Rough it up and give it some nice grip for that stuff to hold on to. Now, when it comes to graphite shafts, this is a shaft I'm reusing. It's already been prepared. And you can see the end of it is quite rough. When you buy a graphite shaft, it might have several layers of paint on it as well as a clear coat. So by default, it's not gonna fit into your, your golf club you're gonna to need to sand all that off. Sand off, it's good to sand it right down to the graphite. Don't go too much or else it'll be too loose. You wanna take the clear coat off and you wanna take those initial layers of paint off and then check and see how it fits into the club. And again, you're gonna want it nice and rough so the epoxy can hold on to something. All right, we're gonna put the shaft into the vise here and tighten it up a little bit. And you're gonna to wanna to consider where the logo is on the shaft. Now, I tend to like my logo facing down. When we put the club head on, just for the sake of how it wants to hang, I would set it so the club head is gonna to wanna to hang down like this. So I don't wanna look at the logo in the shaft, so I'm gonna make the logo face up. And then when I'm holding it over the ball, I'm not looking at a logo. You have to consider where you'd like the logo to be on your shaft. So I'm gonna tighten that shaft in there and tilt it a little bit up like that. And I'm gonna need a new ferrule. I also wanted to show you this ferrule. 
which has a little bit of a sleeve on it, meaning if you have a shaft that's a little too small for the club hosel, this can help fill that gap. And ferrules are available online. Again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure they're the right diameter for the club. Now I'm gonna double check that this ferrule is gonna fit on that club and it does just fine. So now we're ready to start mixing up the epoxy. I went to my local automotive store, Canadian Tire here, and I used this JB Quick Weld epoxy. It seems to work pretty well. It works so well, in fact, that when I need to replace a shaft, I have to use the torch. The heat gun can't cut it because it holds pretty good. Make sure when using epoxy, you open a window, have some good ventilation. You might wanna wear some gloves, latex gloves or something. You don't wanna get it on your hands. Now I have some, you know, just popsicle kind of applicator sticks here. I'm going to make one a little bit thinner so I can fit it down in the hosel all the way down. Slice it with my knife a little bit. So I've made that a little thinner to get it down inside. Now, once you start using this stuff, it sets up fairly quickly. So you don't want to mix up a whole lot if you're going to reshaft several clubs. Just mix up a little bit at a time. I'm going to use a piece of cardboard here and squeeze out this epoxy onto the cardboard. There's two different colors there, a black and a white. I'm gonna pop that lid back on so it doesn't dry out on me. And I'm gonna start mixing it together. It's the mixture of the epoxy that starts it reacting and setting up. So with that white and black mix, I'm gonna mix it up till it's nice and gray. All right, that's looking good. I'm gonna take my club head, some of this epoxy, and I'm gonna put it down inside the club head. Now, I like to be generous with the epoxy, especially in, inside the, the hosel here. I'm gonna keep scooping it up, putting it in there. Some of this might go up inside the shaft, so make sure you're rubbing it along the outside edges of the hosel. All right, I'll set that aside. I'm also going to scoop some up and I'm gonna put it onto the shaft all the way around. Now you might wanna double check that your shaft goes all the way down into the club before you start putting the epoxy on because you don't wanna glue it and have it come up short. The shaft needs to go all the way down to the base of the hosel. And I'm gonna go a little higher so it can hold on the, the ferrule as well. Now I might need to apply a little bit more once the ferrule goes on because it's gonna push a lot of the epoxy up. So I'm gonna pop this on. I'm gonna scoop off some of that sludge and put it back on the shaft there. So with all that done, I'm now gonna take the club head, make sure we're aligned the way we want. I'm just gonna slide it on there. Nice and tight. Make sure the ferrule is nice and tight. Take my rag and I'm gonna wipe off any excess stuff. Again, I might come back later and remove any extra with some acetone. I'm gonna gently remove it. And I'm just gonna kind of rest it on the ground, the end of the shaft, and give it a little push. Make sure it's all the way down. And you have just a little bit of time to make sure it's aligned properly on your club with your logo if you want. I might give it a little turn just to change the direction of the epoxy inside a little bit. There we go, I'm gonna let that set up. It depends on the kind of epoxy you're using. This might set up in, you know, within 10 minutes, but not fully cure until say overnight. So I won't use this club until the next day. That same process applies to the graphite shaft as well. I hope that information helped and gives you some confidence to assemble your own clubs. If you're liking this content, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Greg's Golf Shack.